All right, Ambush, today we are joined by Sarah and Charlotte, a duo known as the Command Sisters, and they have been building up a whole lot of hype over the last couple years, and through that hype, they have been able to get signed to Universal Music Group Canada, which has allowed them to now release their debut EP, Rouge. It came out earlier in October here, and it is now out in the world. It's an eight-track banger, front to back, and we're here to discuss it here today with the Command Sisters. How's it going today, Sarah and Charlotte? It's great. It's going good. Yeah. How are you? Oh, I'm doing very well. <laughs> very, very good. Very excited, I must say, to dive into this new EP here. I couldn't find my red lipstick today, so sorry, guys. I'm not matching the brand or Rouge, but um, Charlotte's representing, so we're good. It's okay. We're, I've got you covered. <laughs> this is the closest thing I had to red, so like this morning, I was like, damn, I need to update my wardrobe. <laughs> It's like a faded red, so it still counts. It still kind of counts, but it's the closest thing I had. And I was like, all right, well, all right we got to go with it. Got to be on Got to be on point, right? <laughs> you tried. <laughs> uh, no worries. Either way, we're going to be on point here with this conversation, this debut EP. So first off and foremost, I would just like to know, because anyone who has been keeping track with the band knows that you guys actually signed back in 2018. You recorded this EP in 2019. So it's been quite the process to get here, a three-year journey to release this EP. So first and foremost, what is it like to finally have it out into the world? It's really exciting. I know, um, obviously, initially, uh, we were supposed to release it in March of, was it the first single was coming out? March or April? March of 2020. Uh, yeah, March of 2020. I'm um, not a good year for a lot of reasons, and that month in particular, not really the best year. So um, it was supposed to be our our first single was supposed to be out sooner. Um, but, you know, just to have it out and we ended up having to kind of readjust our plan and strategy with like being at home. And we filmed a couple like at home videos. And I think a lot of the process from start to finish was very fun and collaborative and obviously some of it had to change over time because of the pandemic, but now I wouldn't have, um, yeah, I wouldn't have changed any of the process and, and the people we worked with were incredible. So it's, it's pretty exciting to finally have it out. Mm, awesome. Awesome. And Charlotte for yourself, what is that, that feeling of finally knowing that this years of hard work of writing and otherwise is finally out for the world to enjoy? It's beyond exciting. I think, you know, there's two things that I love the most in music. It's obviously performing and then you know, when you write something, you work on something and it's finally out for people to hear, seeing the reaction um, and, you know, the support. And everybody's been so um, awesome and um, nice and just really um, exciting to see all the reactions. That's like the most exciting thing for me. So obviously we recorded this all like before the <laughs> before the pandemic and everything. So, you know, to have it out finally is just, you know, it's kind of like a little winning moment. Um, we finally, we crossed the bridge. We did that. So um, yeah, it's really exciting. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, you mentioned that plans had to adapt to make sure that everything got the most time in the sun. It got the illumination that it needed. And of course, you mentioned that you guys filmed a couple of home music videos in order to make that happen. And of course, you had to do that for the first single that came off of this EP all the way back in May of 2020 there, all the way back as if the last year and a half year has really been that long, right? But with I can't do, or I can do what I want to. So for yourselves, did you have much videography experience or was it just like, okay, so let's just grab an iPhone and figure this out. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Like we've been always involved in the creative process. Um, with in different areas of our career um over the years um but as far as like filming myself i haven't like gone outside of i don't know what when people are kids what did they use like iMovie or like <laughs> yeah like <laughs> we on your, on your laptop <laughs> um, so i remember that night really well um because charlotte um was 
I forget what you were doing that night, but I just remember that like we had to film it and I was like, oh, I don't know if we could like do a music video. I don't know if it'll look cool. And um, yeah, I was so pessimistic. I was like, this is going to be terrible. It's going to turn out terrible. We cannot do this. Like I was just like shooting it all down because I, we had never done something like that before, you know? Yeah, exactly. And um, I remember I just like had my iPhone and I was like, okay, let's like give this a go and like see how it'll be. And I ended up using like mostly Instagram filters and I just shot it like this. Or I shot it like that. And then for a couple shots, like I use like my um, sunglasses and put it through the lens, the camera lens and um, try to be like creative with it. I ended up putting some like, lipstick on a um, sunglass, sunglasses and then filming through the sunglasses. So we got creative with it. And the way that it was edited, like I was like, wow, I want to do more iPhone it's music. It's so great, video. actually. Like I'm not trying to post it. I think it's still our most viewed video, which to me kind of opened my eyes to like, you can be really creative and DIY and do it yourself. Um, and you don't necessarily have to limit yourself to like a high production video. Mm -hmm. yeah. As awesome as having a high production video is the experience of it and being able to say, oh, hey, look at this. But even then, just knowing like what you are capable of doing on your own, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was really fun. Love it. Love it. And I've been loving this album, which of course came with two new tracks for those who have maybe been keeping up with your singles. It came with two songs here with singles with I Wouldn't Cry and a newer track as well with Trust Myself. So I'd love to dive into this uh, new single here with Trust Myself. What exactly does it mean? to the command sisters what is the energy you're trying to capture within it trust myself um that was really fun because that was the one of the few co-writes that we did on the album um we wrote it with simon wilcox who is she's so talented um uh we this was in la obviously you know a couple of years ago and she well she's worked on like nick jonas stuff and just done a lot of really big um pop singles and so it was an honor to work with her and um I feel like we were just feeling really like spontaneous. We wanted to do something on the album that was a bit more moody and dark. Um, I was like really inspired by Billie Eilish at the time, like, you know, sort of that minimalistic sonic kind of landscape. And um, yeah, it just, it just happened so quickly. And then we were, you know, we were just through the chorus and we we're like, this is, this is pretty cool. This is, this is neat. This is what we needed for the album. So this song means a lot to me. It's, you know, it's spontaneous. It's about, you know, not being able to kind of control yourself when it's, you know, something or someone that you are kind of obsessed with. For me, that's, you know, food, chocolate. Um, <laughs> so this song means a lot of different things. I know Sarah relates to it in a different way herself. So uh, yeah, I love this. This is like my, my secret favorite. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Nice. Love it. How, Sarah, she mentioned that you have some uh, your own vibes that you take from the track. So can you share exactly what those are with us? Yeah, I find with all the songs that we work on, um, we probably not interpret it differently, but like we have our own, obviously, like life experiences. And even over the years, I mean, some of these songs like Chameleon, for example, my sister had written that one when she was like 17, 18. I can't remember how old you were exactly, but it was uh, quite a bit younger. And the fact that it made the record was really special because over the years, that song has changed its meaning for me because I've gone through different life experiences and I've connected to it in different ways. Um, so a lot of the songs Charlotte actually writes um, actually have multiple meanings to them, um, whether it be politics or, you know, a relationship or something that isn't necessarily a relationship. Um, and then, you know, it depends like how people relate to it. So. I think it's cool that, you you know, songs can have different meanings. People can connect to it in different ways. Um, sometimes for Cheryl, it's sushi. Or I think I'm more sushi and you're more chocolate. I'm more of a sushi, salty person. I think you're more of a sweet person. Um, so yeah. you're differently in that way, too. And combined together, it creates a very nice palette for sure, right? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, of course, you mentioned that the album was recorded there in Hollywood. You guys had spent years touring and otherwise, and you mentioned the feedback aspects of the music game and what it's like to do that. So with this new album being out, and of course, there only being the 
uh, online aspect truly so far. What has the feedback been like for that before we dive into what it was been like to return to the live stage? For sure. Yeah, I think like as a new artist, you know, you always wonder like, oh, you know, are new people like what are the like, people that have never heard us before going to think? Um, and that's obviously really exciting too. You know, when you release music, you get new people coming to your page, new people reaching out, posting, whatever. Um, but what was really special was our reaction from like the fans that have like followed us for like eight, nine, 10 years. Like we have people that have been on our pages that long and they've seen us like grow up since like little kids singing together and they've seen how we've changed and how we've progressed. So to me, that was like the most special was to see those like diehard. Um, I don't know if you like, I even really want to call it fans, just like supporters that have been there for like over 10 years, you know, that have supported us through uh, a lot and, um, still stick around. And yeah, that was really special. Wow. Yeah, that was absolutely, yeah. Really rewarding to see that. <laughs> now that you bring it up, sir. Awesome. So I didn't even think about that. The fact that you would have so many people that have been following you for well over the decade that you have been just grinding for so long because everyone always thinks of, oh, this new band got signed to this label, but oh, this new band has been these two sisters performing on stages for years through high school coffee shops all across North America, right? Yeah. And people don't realize, um, or not realize, we don't talk about it a lot. Like of when we were quite younger, I think I was like 12, um, we were living in Nashville and we'd signed our first um, publishing production deal with a guy in Nashville or company. And um, the company was really involved with YouTube. So when YouTube first came up and everybody was getting discovered off of YouTube, we were actually around a bunch of YouTubers all the time. So a lot of our followers that came initially were from like the YouTube community and like people that sang on YouTube. So yeah, that, I mean, that goes back when I was like 12. So like some of those people that have been supporting us since that era, I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane. And really, I mean, amazing that people still, you know, care to support. And now it's like our debut album, you know, so it's, it's really special. It was a long time in the making for sure. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, we also had the return to the live stage recently. So before I let you go, I would love to know what was it like to be able to take these songs to the stage once again after having performed them back in 2019, early 2020, having to sit there for a year and a half, not playing. And then you get to open up for OLP and Moist at a festival. How, how crazy was that? Is that as your return to the stage? And what was it like? What was the feedback live from the fans there? That was really amazing. Um, you don't realize how much you miss something until, you know, it's gone, obviously, and you're not doing it. Like, I, you know, I think I took live performance for granted um, for a long time. And then once it was gone and there was like, you know, we can't do this at all. <laughs> it was like, wow, this is, you know, like over half of the reason that, you know, I love music so much is that in-person connection. Um, and I know that any musician can relate to that. So to have our first show back, you know, that big, like, you know, opening for Our Lady Peace and just being there. And it, 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 it was so surreal. It felt like kind of like pre pandemic, um, you know, like people, yeah, like it was a crowd of like, I don't know, like thousands of people you know, without masks, just like rocking out. People were just so excited to be there. It was like, wow, this is like, this is like the good old days. <laughs> um, it was just surreal um, and, and a really great first step back onto the stage. And so, oh yeah, I hope to do so much more like that in the future. I think we're on a good path to continue doing that and to keep it going. So um, yeah, it was surreal. All right, Sarah, how was it like to command to rock the stage once again? Um, well, first I was kind of nervous cause I hadn't worn like stage shoes in a minute. Like I hadn't like, you know, dressed up outside of wearing sweats in a long time. Um, <laughs> so that part was a little, uh, nerve wracking, but as far as performing, I mean, I, I just sense that a lot of the fans and supporters are so eager to get back to shows again and supporting live music. Um, so I felt the energy was so positive and people were just feeding off of each other's energy. And, um, it was really unlike any show we've done before. Not that we hadn't done 
bigger shows before, but for the fact that the crowd was so magnetic, people were so happy to be back and you could feel that. And um, the Moist and Our Lady Peace fans are fun. They know how to have a good time. So that was great. I was one of those fans. I, I, I can hopefully attest to that myself. And I can attest that I loved having this conversation here with both of you here today, Sarah and Charlotte. Thank you so much for joining me here on the DTP to dive behind your debut EP, Rouge. Thank you so much for having us. It was fun chatting.